Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to day two of worship in the wilderness. I hope you can see in the background, I've positioned myself in such a way that you can see this most amazing uh, baobab tree uh, in the background, which is probably hundreds and hundreds of years old. It is a magnificent specimen. So yesterday, our text was from Exodus uh, chapter 7, verse 16 where God, uh, it's almost an instruction, I think, the way I read it, let my people go so that they can, in the wilderness, worship me. And I ask you to think about what does worship mean for you? What does wilderness mean for you? And so today and tomorrow, I just want to give a thought or two, firstly today about wilderness, tomorrow about worship. Um, so I think clearly we so when we talk about wilderness, I think in biblical terms, we we understand as we read scripture that so many biblical characters um, had incredible experiences with God, met God in wilderness experiences. We think of people like Jacob, Hagar, we think of Job, David, Elijah, and then of course, uh, much later, uh, Jesus himself had incredible transformative um, and life-changing experiences in wilderness. So we know that when we talk about wilderness, it is a physical place in the Bible, um, a deserted place, not much growing there, um, and that it is an actual physical place. But when we, we talk about wilderness, in our lives, I think wilderness uh, is more than just the physical place. It is, um, you know, even though we might not live in a desert or in a wilderness, we might be living in an uh, urban area, built up area, but we still know wilderness. We still understand and experience wilderness because wilderness in biblical terms is not just, does not just refer to the um, physical place, but it also refers to times and seasons of pain, of struggle, of barrenness, maybe even feelings of being exiled far from God, far from life and hope. And we might experience seasons of wilderness uh, and it might take the shape of having lost a job, having lost a loved one who passed away. Uh, perhaps maybe it is uh, you have recently moved to the Netherlands from another country and you're struggling to settle in. You're struggling to make friends, uh, struggling to find your rhythm and your place in society. And so the season you're in feels like a season of wilderness. Please excuse all the flies. Um, you feel like you're in a season of barrenness, of exile, of wilderness. So it comes to us in many shapes and forms. But I think wilderness also is not just seasons of pain and struggle. I think when the Bible talks about wilderness, it also speaks about, if we especially look at Jesus' life, it speaks to us about us intentionally, and we see this in Jesus' life, us intentionally going to seek out places of uh, withdrawing, places of solitude, so that we can draw near to God. And so I think wilderness can also represent for us Seasons of withdrawing from in order to draw closer to God. And I think if we think about wilderness in that sense, we all need wilderness. We all need wilderness every day. We all uh, need to desire and make a plan to build wilderness into our lives. Times where we can withdraw from all the stuff so that we can draw closer to God. And that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, the month of September uh, is my sabbatical month. And so I'm in the African wilderness. And what I'm doing is I'm withdrawing from in order to draw closer to God. So I'm using this time to, to pray, uh, to pray for you, for myself, for the church, for our country, the Netherlands, to pray for the world, to pray for my family, to pray for you. I'm withdrawing from to draw closer to God. And I think that's what wilderness is about. So your text for today is Mark's gospel, chapter one, verse 12. And it says, the spirit sent him out 
into the wilderness. May God's Spirit send you out into the wilderness so that you can withdraw from to draw closer to. Consider, reflect upon what does it mean to be sent into the wilderness. And again, what does wilderness mean for you? God bless you. Have a great day.